Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled Flight Testing the Air Launch Cruise Missile, Elkham, out at Edwards Air Force Base. Now the Elkham was developed in the 70s and we got tasked with the test mission out at Edwards in the, uh, the late 70s to do a, no a number of items related to testing this vehicle. Now the first part of the test mission was to clear the test route. Uh, initially, the test route was in the R2508 Edwards Restricted Airspace, and this vehicle was to be a terrain-following, low-altitude penetrating vehicle, so it was down there at just a couple of hundred feet. And yeah, we had the maps, and it showed where obstacles were and stuff like that, but um, you're not going to risk a couple million dollar missile in a test program on hitting somebody's tower that um, might not have been on the map due to uh, somebody's error of positioning it. So, okay, uh, our job was to fly the route and make sure that it was clear of any obstacles that might cause a problem. Well, that was a lot of fun. We got to see the people up at Lone Pine and Death Valley, uh, nice up and close. So we'd go flying up through the uh, prescribed routes, and it, it was a little fun test mission clearing that. Eventually, the, uh, the uh, profile was enlarged, to uh, include almost all of the R2508 airspace, and then we'd go up in Las Vegas airspace, and they would have launches actually out over the Pacific Ocean. They could be from aircraft, ships, or even submarines. And so that all that airspace had to be cleared uh, coming into the test range. And uh, that was some, that was some uh, very fun flying. Now, another part of it was to clear the recovery system. The... Uh, vehicle, if it got into problems, they wanted to be able to uh, deploy a parachute and recover it. And they also wanted to be able to recover it at the end of the mission to see how everything performed, you know, engines and stuff like that. They didn't want the vehicle destroyed. So the mission was you take it up in an aircraft, uh, you drop it, and then you make sure that the parachute works. So here you go. I'm chasing the uh, vehicle coming out of the uh, deployment aircraft and as it goes down, falling like a rock, like a bomb, I push over and I go after it. Now, what's supposed to happen is fairly rapidly a little door opens up and the chute deploys. Now, these deployment chutes uh, are notorious for not working very well. So there were a few problems early on in the program. Um, often it worked fine. If, if the test mission worked fine, I would follow it down a little bit. I'd go idle, speed brakes, all this stuff. As the chute started to deploy, of course, the vehicle would slow down. Then I would go into a high G spiral. And the photographers with the 18-pound Hasselblad, 200 frames a second, would be taking a video of the deployment of the chute and that. And then I'd be circling around it as it went down in a, in a fairly high G maneuver to stay in tight. And these guys were just, I, I cannot praise them too much for the ability they had to get absolutely perfect video um, on these deployments. Uh, one time I held the camera on F-16 tank jettison and I was all over the place. So that, uh, that, that showed me that these guys really were good. But anyway, okay, so we're doing the deployment. Everything goes well, the chute comes out, it comes down, and the vehicle is recovered. Now, they had a civilian government contract who was responsible for these chutes, and like I said, they didn't always work. And on one of the test missions, the vehicle comes out, it starts going down, the door opens, the chute doesn't deploy properly, and I'm going with it for a while, but, you know, we're getting going faster, the ground is coming up, uh, the chute's not going to work, it's pretty obvious, and I don't want to be a smoking hole in the ground, so I go, that's enough of that, and I pull off. Well, we go into the debrief, and the contractor's in there, and I had, not that I can remember anybody ever criticizing how I flew Chase, um, you know, that I screwed up or anything like this, but this guy really starts laying into me that I didn't follow it long enough, and of course, I'm, uh, it was a much older gentleman, <laughs> and uh, I was, uh, 
uh, taken aback and I, I didn't quite know what to say. And as I, as I was starting my thoughts coming together, you know, it's always like, you know, the next day you, you know all the wonderful things you want to say. But before I could hardly say anything, the camera guy lays into him and he says, well, we're not going to be a blockety blocks smoking hole in the ground because you thought we should have stayed longer. We, he stayed longer than I was comfortable with when he finally pulled off on the thing. And he says, you're lucky we got the footage you got. And the guy backed off. So that was kind of interesting. Okay, back to testing the vehicles. We got the chutes cleared. They're working now, working well enough. So we got the vehicle. Now, um, you look at that wing out there. It had extremely high wing loading. And you know what that means. It means that uh, you got to develop a lot of lift off a very small area. That means you got to have a lot of speed to do this. And you get in the back side of the power curve and you're in a world of hurt. And you notice all those little uh, red danger tags on the missile. Uh, supposedly this thing would come out with enough force when these wings deployed. Of course, they were stowed in the bomb bay. Um, as you saw in the other pictures, everything stowed. When these wings would deploy, uh, if you were on the ground with this thing, you could, uh, supposedly it would cut a guy in half. So it was a very dangerous type of operation. And of course, the fins on the back, the three of them, the elevator and the rudder, they all folded down and then deployed and the, uh, the scoop came up. So um, they dropped this thing. All the little wings and tails deploy, the engine starts up, and away it goes through the test area. Now, to keep control of this, uh, and as a safety item, they had three F4s, and in the back seat of each F4 was a little joystick where they had a test pilot back there, and he could take over in case of a problem uh, with the vehicle. He could come in manually if there was some sort of problem with the automatic control. And each F4 generated a tone that the Alcom received. And if for any reason the Alcom stopped receiving the tones, if, uh, you know, for some reason the three uh, chase aircraft disappeared or uh, something happened where it lost the tone, it would p supposedly pull up into the recovery maneuver because this thing were at low altitude. You can't deploy the, the chute at just a couple hundred feet. So it would pull up into a recovery profile, deploy the chute, and come on down and land. So, okay, that's fine. Guys in the back seat. A um, <clears throat> number of the test missions went fairly well. But there was one where um, things didn't go the best. And the, uh, the vehicle uh, ended up getting into uh, a little bit of trouble. Uh, the pilots would come in and uh, in engage, and they were able to uh, successfully take over flying the vehicle, get it back on profile, get it in the recovery mode. The parachute would deploy and it would come down. Usually everything went fine and uh, there was very little need to interfere with the, uh, with the vehicle and put it into uh, recovery mode. Well, it wasn't always the case, especially early on in the program. Now, they're out flying over the desert uh, and a lot of the elevations are high and it's hot. And like I said, it's got high wing loading if it starts to get under power. And these things aren't light. You know, they got a lot of fuel in them. These are very heavy vehicles. Uh, they've got a, a, a payload, or at least for the test missions, a simulated payload. This can be nuclear or conventional. But anyway, it's not a light payload. It can, it can carry a, a pretty heavy piece of ordnance. So uh, you can't get behind the power curve on this or you get in trouble. And one of the guys was telling me that uh, they waited a little too long to uh, to come in and recover. And uh, the guy comes on, he takes over recovery of the vehicle, and it's not going well. And one of the other guys is commenting on the uh, the test frequency. It says, he says, it's going down, it's going down, it's down. And the vehicle didn't survive. So, um, like all test missions, uh, you go through a lot of various effort to get the thing right, and there's a number of successes and plenty of failures till you get the thing to function properly. And of course, this is a, a, a very impressive uh, weapon system, um, as, as, as we know many years later. So anyway, that's the tale, some tales, of testing the Elkham cruise missile out at Edwards in the late 70s. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.